today we're going to be talking about the fan or switch to the idle switch. <laughs> Let's get started. Before we get started, there's a couple things that you need to know that I don't know anymore because I forgot. But you know, there's a couple things that we should talk about before we get started. Like, why do we need to do this? Now, I know that's been beaten to death online, but the reasons are for an extended aisle switch, you get a thousand RPMs over your idle. So that's good. Why? Because amps which allows you to power other things, you know, like lights, winches, radios, etc. It is common, as we all know, that the police Cherokees had this option. Well, it's not common, it's a fact. If you're lucky enough to have one of those or an extended idle switch with the four slot bezel, um, good for you, I hate you, but you know, for those who don't want on their own switch, this is how I went about it. And this is, you know, it's me talking. The second thing we get to talk about is our fan override switch. Now some of you may not think it's required or anything and why would you want to do this? The reason why I like to do it is because it will give me a better control over my cooling system. There you go, it's like you're beating it to the punch before it gets too hot. What I want you to take away today is a good visual on how to do your extended aisle switch and your fan override switch on a 97 plus XJ. I have a 2000. So if there are any variance differences, I apologize. Please comment below. Also, um, one more thing. I just have to put all the basics down. I have a ZJ 5.9 alternator installed, so my readings might be completely different to someone that has a stock alternator. Okay? Thank you. I'm testing the zoom on this big lens. And uh, no idea how it's gonna turn out. My fans are probably. Okay, so here we are. This is our first plug for our extended idle. This is the wire we were looking for. Is this gray one right here, which is wire 812. You can tell which wire it is because they're all labeled on the other side of the plug. It tells these numbers, starting with one, and it goes all the way to 22. You're looking for 12 right there. And that comes out to be this gray wire, okay? And this gray wire is what you need to ground out. And that grounding out is what's gonna give you your extended idle. Now you can see here, I used a simple splice-in connector. Uh, you can use whatever you want, but this is pretty common that most people have at their house, so it's, it'll do the job just fine. Although it's not the, probably the best waterproof solution in the world. If you wanted to use one of those waterproof connectors that you just use and splice two together, that would probably be the best option. I'm just obviously, I, I'm all sorts of evil and just and use that, but that's fine. So I ran this green wire, which is the ground wire that I'm spliced in with, all the way inside to my switch panel. And then uh, from there it's grounded out. So that's your basic 101, how you're gonna wire this. Well, this is how, this is what you gotta do. All right, here's our exited aisle demonstration number one in park. Works just fine. Now it should work in neutral as well. Now we're in neutral. We'll all be damned. Some of you already know how all that works, but you know, again, a visual. Never hurt anybody. Okay, so this is my ham radio. It's a... Um, Yazoo 8800. Uh, basically, one of the features on it is it gives you your volt readings from your engine. So what your output is right now, volts-wise, is displayed right here. At least you can change it that way. Now, what I want to do with this is just give you a demonstration of how when you turn on your idle, you up your power. So now I'm going to gauge if we jumped up 0.1 volts, which, you know, you're like, okay, whatever, you know. Who really cares about the volts anyways? That's just showing you that it actually does do something. It's another proof of concept saying that the extended idle actually does put more output, which we all kind of know, but you know, there are people out there that need help. So here you go. Whoa, okay. So that was us identifying which wire we need to ground out for accident idle. In A12, 
first connector closest to the radiator. It's a gray wire for a 97 plus, unless you say otherwise, because something tells me that for a 2000, 2001, it's a little different. But I think that's more for the, the fan. Anyway, speaking of fan, that's what we're going to do next. Bear with me. So here we are, pin C2 on our other plug, all right, this is the C plug. This wire, the blue with pink stripe, is what's going to control your fan. So every time you ground this wire out, you're going to turn on your fan, the stock E fan. This is the same kind of setup as you got in the other guy with the extended dial. You just ground this wire out somewhere on your switch, wherever how you mean to do that, and boom, you got control, son. So what I have done now is I spliced in my ground wire for my blue and pink stripe wire, which is C2, which is going to give you your fan override. What I'm going to do now is grind it out. You'll hear it kick on, so it's a proof of concept, and hopefully it'll throw a code. Then I'm going to read that code, tell you what the code is, just so you know, and then I'm going to tell you how I fix that issue so you don't have a code anymore. So here we go. Grinding out, right here. Local ground. Fan kicks on. No big deal. All right. Okay. I'm testing the focus. I can like reach the focus and like in my face. Big news. Somehow, so way, I don't know how, but I cannot throw the code. I've tried everything in the book. I've even tried to fake it for you guys and like pull the fan relay or the fuse or disconnect the fan and I still cannot get my computer to cooperate. It's like it knows what I'm trying to do and it doesn't want to help me. So, which is technically a good thing or a scary thing because now it's not actually throwing anything when I have an issue. But the point is, that it's going to make is that it gives you a code saying something about your fan, relay, clutch, something, malfunction. Um, up front, I will say that it never actually happened for me for a while, but eventually it did. And I was warned that it might happen, and it did eventually. So if that's you, and it's not throwing it, okay, maybe you dodged a bullet, maybe it'll happen down the line. Whatever happens, what you gotta do. Uh, you know what? Okay, so we're doing this vlog style. I'm, I'm shooting from the hip here. So this is currently how I have mine wired. Comes through the firewall up here, through the conduit, up and around, all the way up here, and down to the switch panel. So I have my extended idle, and I have my fan override. Boom goes the dynamite. Okay, so I have two theories as to why having it wired the way I do is working. Theory one. The back feed cannot travel that distance from where the computer is to where my switches are in the ground point. So what do I mean by back feed? What I mean by back feed is that the length between where the computer is and where the ground switch is, the resistance in the line is making it a non-issue. So there's not enough for it to travel all the way through and get back to the computer. So effectively limiting that being an issue. Now there's another way you can do that and that is running a diode. Now. I was gonna do a diode, but I don't have the capability right now to do that properly, so I'm not gonna embarrass myself. But a diode, all it does is allow a flow of electricity or whatever through one direction and it cannot come back. That will eliminate any back feed going back to the computer. That's what I've read online is how people have gotten around that issue. For me, obviously running it a long distance seems to be working for me. Theory number two is, I have my relay up there so I can get power to the switches or to that switch and activate my little red light because I'm cool. So I believe that that is also maybe helping the situation and effectively limiting the code. Now, some of you are probably like, you're an idiot, you're not an electrician. You know what, I'm not. But I know what's happening and what's working for me. So hopefully you can make it so. Even if you do have a degree in electrical engineering. Okay, so I know that wasn't a very concrete example of how to get rid of your code. It's more like a theory that kind of worked for me, but I can't really prove it. So, sorry, but it's a good tip and it's a good approach if you want to give that a go if it's a thing to you. Other than that, that would be how you wire in your extend dial and your fan override. And I give you a good little example of what happens output-wise with amps from your alternator when you throw on that extended idle. 
Um, fan overrides off pretty obviously what it's supposed to do. So I like to use it on the trail and whatnot when I try to beat the heat soak maybe a little bit or have my auxiliary fan take care of that. But that's a, that's a whole other video. So hope you took away something from it. If not, I'm sure I'll get a lot of crazy messages and comments asking the same question I already answered probably in the video. But it's a guy. It's whatever. It's YouTube. There are two things you should do right now. One, look down below in the description and like our Facebook page for more daily content. And two, subscribe to our channel for more videos. And in case you didn't get anything out of this video, here's a random clip from Afghanistan. Come on. It's in the life of Joe today. It's the Joe camera. Why does he have a camera? Oh, because I put it on him.